This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Now that you've seen how to apply dimensions, which in itself is very easy to do, and you've seen about dimension styles, well, let's look at some more advanced dimension operations, some other things that you can do with dimensions. Well, we saw our basic dimension styles. Let's use architectural project. And let's add some linear dimensions. Easy enough, very straightforward. Well, what if I wanted to continue on and dimension the rest of this wall? I can. If I come here to the continue option, click it. And it picks up right from where my last dimension left off. And I can come and keep dimensioning. I can keep going down the line wherever it takes me, if I want. Each one of these is its own dimension. So I can delete them, I can edit them, I can change them, whatever I need to do. Now there's another one called baseline. Works very similarly. I can select the base dimension pick it, and now I can extend from here. All of my dimensions will start on this left point that I picked, and I can dimension across however I need to. It'll stack the dimensions automatically, showing them the way they need to be shown. I can still go into these and grip edit, make changes, and so on and so forth, because each one is its own dimension. Pretty handy tool. Now, I can come in here and add a break. I select my dimension to add or remove a break to. And if you see here, it's set to auto, manual, or remove. Well, I don't have one to remove, but I want it to automatically break anywhere that needs to be broken. And it did, right here. It didn't physically break my line, so to speak, but visually, it put a gap in there so that it doesn't cross my dimension. If I move my dimension, the break moves with it. Now I can come up and use the break command to remove this break. First I select the dimension that I want to remove the break from. Then I type in the letter R for remove and press enter. And it automatically removes it. Now I can execute multiple breaks at once. Hit the letter M, press enter and select all the text that I want. Press enter, hit A for auto, and it automatically applies a break wherever it's possible, as you can see here, here, and here. And I can do the same thing with the remove. The adjust space will automatically adjust the space between my dimensions. Select all of the dimensions you want to adjust to, Press enter. I can enter in my own value or just let AutoCAD automatically do it. And it spaces all of my dimensions equally. The quick dimension will create a series of dimensions of a selected object. So if I have a line drawn here in paper space, it doesn't work too well through a viewport. So it's not something you want to do this way. But if I have my line work, I can select my line, press enter and it will put in my dimension very quickly. If I have several different objects, for example, I can pick it and select more than one, press enter, and I can get a series of dimensions for my line work. Now, you could get some really crazy things, so pay attention to what it is exactly that you're doing but I have three dimensions here. This dimension gives me the horizontal distance between this point and this point, and then I have one for these points. The quick dimension is really only used for horizontal and vertical dimensioning. The inspection adds or removes different information for selected dimensions. If I select it, I can see some of the things that I need, and it depends on your different inspection rates and labels that you're going to use, if you want to add it to it.
So it depends on what you want and how you're going to use and what the point is of your drawing. The update dimension is very nice. If you come in and alter your dimension through the properties manager, for example, like changing one of your arrows to closed fill, changing the arrow size to 3 8 or turning off one of the dimension lines. As you can see, it's kind of messed up. But if I select the update dimension command, select my dimension or dimensions, press enter, and it fixes it. It puts it back according to the settings for the dimension style that's applied to it. So if you mess something up, it's okay. You can fix it pretty quick. Or if you get a drawing from someone else, you can apply the dimension style, your dimension style that you've made for your company, and then hit the update button and it will fix all of their dimensions. This is a nice little feature. It puts a dimension jog into it. It works like the add or remove to the break in a dimension, only it adds a jog. So select your dimension, specify the jog location, and it can be anywhere, and there it is. It's that simple. If you select it, you can grip at it and move it up or down. That's nice for a broken dimension that shows an exaggerated size or length. There are some other features down here as well. If your dimension becomes unassociated to an object, for example, if this object gets deleted, it's no longer there. So your dimension is dimensioning nothing. It doesn't go away. But I can draw in a new line, pick the reassociate option, and follow the instructions on the command line. Select the object, press enter, pick a point, and then pick my second point. And now this dimension is associated to this object. If I edit the object, it goes with it. I can change some of my tolerances, add a center mark to a circle or arc. I can oblique my dimensions. I can rotate the text angle. I can left, center, and right justify my text and I can override the system variables used in my dimensions. So it depends on what you're doing and what you need to do. These advanced tools can help you tweak the look and the display of your specific dimension objects. Now there are a few other things you can do. You can select your dimension and change them through the properties manager. Now all of these settings here are going to override the dimension style. So once you do this, if you change the style, you're going to have some issues. You're going to need to use the update feature. But you can turn your dimension lines off and on of your selected text. You can turn your extension lines off or on. You can even edit the units or your alternate units. Change the fit or change the text. You can grip edit dimensions as well. Select your object. This point and this point are your dimension points. They will change on what you're dimensioning to. If I pick on my arrows, I can change the height or the elevation. I can change my text and where everything is set. And if you let your cursor sit on top of the grip for a moment, you can use different options when editing. You can center it. You can reset the text position to where the style says it should go. Put it above the dimension line or move it with a leader. Move only the text. Move it with the dimension line. The same goes for the arrow. You can continue the dimension to another object, which is like your continue feature. Use your baseline, or you can flip the arrow. So you can see that you have a lot of tools when editing your dimensions. 
They're easy enough to apply, but then if you want to tweak them a little bit, you can use some of the features in the ribbon. You can use the properties tab, or you can select them yourself and use the grip edits. You can even create new text, continuing or baseline text, just through the grips. So you can create new dimensions without ever using a dimension tool. Now, if you need to change the text for some reason, it's very simple. Type in the command ed for edit. Think of it as editing dimension text. Select the dimension and then type. Your ribbon has a contextual ribbon tab for your text editor. You can change some of the justification. You can bold or unbold or italicize. Whatever it is you need to do, you can do it here. I can delete this text altogether and put in a dimensional override. I can press enter and type in some typical text. When finished, click outside of the dimension box. Now, if you double click on the text, you can get to your editing ability for your text. You can delete, and if you delete everything and then end, it'll automatically put in the measured dimension. If you delete it and want to put it back, you can type in the less than and then greater than without a space in between, just right next to each other. And that tells AutoCAD to display the measured dimension of the dimension.